Hey, it's Scott Adamson from theproductionacademy.com. In this video, we're talking about DBA versus DBC, or A-weighted decibels versus C-weighted decibels. Now, I'm gonna show you the EQ curves that these two weightings use to measure decibels. Plus, I'll talk about the practical implications of what it means for us as sound engineers working in live music. So let's first talk about A-weighted decibels. Now, when these were developed, they were developed to be really accurate for human hearing at a low volume. Now, of course, in live music, we're rarely at really low volume levels. Quite often, we're at loud volume levels. So when you're measuring A-weighted decibels at, say, 95 or 100 or 105 decibels, really high SPLs that we see at a lot of concerts, A-weighted decibels don't really take into account the full frequency spectrum. If you take a look at this chart of the frequencies that A weighting takes into account, you can see that the low frequencies don't really affect DBA. You could have a mix that has a lot of low end to it, and it wouldn't really push up the DBA reading that much. Now, if you take a look at the DBC reading, you can see that the low frequencies are taken into account much more than A weighting. And if you have a mix with a lot of low end frequencies, a lot of bass guitar and kick drum, it will push the DBC reading up much quicker. Now, when we're actually out there doing shows, mixing shows, we quite often face decibel limits. And these can be either in DBA or DBC, but usually the decibel limits are measured in DBA. And like I said, that's accurate for human hearing at low volumes, but it isn't really super accurate when we're thinking about loud music. But that's good for us because we can have a show that has a lot of low end energy and it's not really gonna push those DBA readings up too far to where we get asked to turn down. Now, as a sound engineer, you don't wanna go over these decibel limits because you'll be asked to turn down or worse yet, the systems engineer, the person that's in charge of the PA system will just start putting limiters on you and start turning you down anyway. Those aren't positions you really wanna be in. So it is good to understand what these decibel levels mean and try to be able to stay under them if possible. It can be difficult if you're mixing a loud show, like a heavy metal show or a loud rock show, you don't really want to be turning down all the time. It's meant to be loud, but you can't always do that. So one thing I do when I'm mixing, when I'm on tour, is I bring a decibel meter with me and I check out my DBA readings and my DBC readings for periodically from time to time, just to get a sense of where I'm mixing, how loud I'm mixing. And if I go into a festival situation where there's a decibel limit, I kind of know where I can, where I can live at and be happy and still have the mix sound great. And of course, hearing safety is really important. And if you're mixing at 110 dBA, and I know some shows are just meant to be that way, but if you are mixing that loud, please wear earplugs. It's important to maintain your, maintain your hearing and not get too far into hearing loss, whether you're playing music on stage or mixing bands, whatever you're doing, if you're around loud music, please watch your hearing safety and wear earplugs. All right, hope this was useful information. Hope you don't see too many restrictive decibel limits while you're out there mixing, but it's a good, definitely a good idea to understand the difference between DBA and DBC. Till the next video, see you later, bye.